John, you had a question? Oh, uh, yeah, Walter had his hand up first. Walter? Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm looking at the at the application uh, for conditional and special use permit that that is handwritten, filled out by hand. Yes, sir. I presume, Mr. Ely, you did that. That's correct. Sir. Okay. Um, in it, it ne as far as I can tell or can see, it it never mentions compensation. It never mentions anything other than guest house, guest accommodation, residential use residential use uh, repeatedly. But a couple of things that, that I wanted to ask you about within that. Um, one comment under number, number seven, criteria one, you state no different from surrounding housing. Is there any surrounding housing that, that has a guest house that charges people to stay there? Oh, uh under which section is that, Walter? Uh, it's item, it's, it's page two of four, item seven, and criteria one, the proposed use will not endanger the public health or okay. safety if located where proposed, et cetera. Okay. And the answer written in there says residential use in residential area, no different from surrounding housing, will not oh, pose any danger to public. Mm -hmm. And, yes, sir. and my question has to do with the no different from surrounding housing statement that is in there. Certainly. Uh, that is in specifically in response to uh, posing any danger. So residential housing generally doesn't pose a, a danger. The surrounding housing is residential in character, and it includes uh, actually majority rental properties, uh, which are not conforming. Uh, however, they're, they're there. There's a triplex, there's a duplex, there's a rental, and there's a rental in series from on both sides of our house. Uh, and so none of those are proposing any or posing any dangers, whether they're rented or occupied. So but those are the, those are single family homes that are they're single family homes that are that are rented uh, out is yeah, the for compensation. If yes. I may, is the principal structure on the property? That yes, sir. Okay, yep. if I may. Okay, go ahead. Um, in criteria criteria five, it states the character of the proposed use, if developed according to the plan as submitted, will be in harmony with the area in which it is to be located. Mm -hmm. If, if there are no for compensation guest houses in the area in which it is located, I would wonder if that is in harmony to put one in there. Well, it's an allowed use in the code, you know, based on the, the, the seven criteria. So is it an endangerment? Is it, uh, you know, public benefit? I mean, those are the questions that we're really looking at here tonight. There's seven criteria, and compensation is not one of them. Thank you. Arthur, you had something you handed, nope. did you? John, did you have something? Um, no, I'm still, quite frankly, still hung up on the uh, Well, definition. question specifically for Mr. Ely, that's fine. No. That's okay, nothing. you can go ahead and sit okay. down. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll take the conversation amongst the council here. John, you want to go at Rod? Bill? Uh, Your Honor, if I might, um, Nathaniel made a mention regarding the exclusionary zoning Bill, code. can I get you to speak yeah, up just a little sure. bit for me tonight? Um, Mr. Ely uh, asked about the differences between the building code and the zoning code, and those are really two different and distinct ordinances that have different two different applications. As you look at the zoning code under Section 11-5 uh, of the zoning code under authorized uses, it specifically states this zoning code is an exclusive zoning ordinance wherein the stated uses are the only uses which are permitted in each zoning district. Those uses not listed as permitted or conditionally permitted are not authorized. Uh, the question whether a specific use is encompassed by a listed use shall be subject to the zoning administrator or designee's reasonable discretion. Uh, and it goes on uh, so forth about further when there are resulted changes in technology or business or practice or lifestyle. A use has not been mentioned in the zoning code. The zoning administrator or designee may permit such use if it's clear that the use is comparable to listed uses for the particular zoning district. Um, so it is, it is clear that the zoning code is a exclusionary zoning code, so if a use is not specifically named, it's viewed as not being permissible under the zoning district. Walter? Thank you, Mayor. And to Bill again, if I may, and the Board of Adjustments denial of the CUP was based upon, in every case, the proposed use is not authorized under the definitions of the zoning ordinance as an accessory to a single family dwelling. So Correct. that my question to you is, that fits under 
the preamble to this particular ordinance. Correct, if I may, the, the board in a position of determining that the use as described by the applicant at the hearing was not permissible in their opinion could not really render a specific finding on each of those criteria, but merely to restate that they felt that that was not a permissible use under the zoning code. And so that is how they responded to those individual criteria. Thank you. I don't have a question per se, oh, yeah, uh, just he, a he comment a or two, is that uh, this seems to look into the future a little bit toward the completion almost of an accessory dwelling unit portion of the zoning code. But where we run across a little bit of a sideways issue on it is that uh, at 1,000 square feet, it would be more than what is being contemplated in this future code. Uh, and unfortunately, what we have, much as I like the idea of being able to provide additional housing in town and work towards a little more densification, uh, it's not the way the law is written right now. And so it might be something that's just a little bit ahead of its time and with some thought can come back after the accessory dwelling unit is complete. Because I like the idea, but we're sideways on what's allowed by the code and what isn't here. You're talking about the accessory dwelling unit ordinance that's, that's being worked at through the cusp, Yeah, it's at the cusp of being approved. <clears throat> one that has a guy here. Yeah. Yep. So it seems to look forward to that, but it's not here yet. Well, and, and I must remind the council that uh, we can't think forward of something that may or may not happen. Exactly. We do so not that's have any the kind problem. of reading on. So thank you for bringing that up, Art, but that's something I, I warned the council not to look at that because there is nothing in concrete on that yet. Wayne? Well, even with all of Bill's explanation as to why you can't charge for it. We go back to one of the comments that the Board of Adjustment hearing that states that because under Moscow Code, if it's not specifically permitted, then it's prohibited. So the use proposed by this applicant is in fact prohibited by the zoning code. I really have a hard time wrapping myself around that statement, even with everything that you've said, Bill, because it identifies in zoning whether you can have a boarding house or whether you can have a guest house. I see so many things that are out there that people haven't thought about. And if they're not specifically mentioned by right, then they don't have a right to do that. They can't, then it's not, it's not allowed. It's prohibited. And I, I, I find that hard to believe that our code is written that if we don't specifically say you can do it, then it's then you can't. That's the difficulty I'm having with this. Yeah. You know, I, I got to disagree with you, Wayne, though, that that's what, you know, has kind of been hammered into us from the, since we started on the council, is that, you know, that it's an exclusionary code. If it's not, you know, as Bill said, if it's not allowed in the code, then it's prohibited. That's why there are the, the variances in the conditional use permits that, that we have out there that, that people have to apply for or the potential changes in ordinance, which whatever that may be. Um, you know, this is something that, that you know, I, w I would like to see a guy be able to do, but I don't see us able to. I think we're going to have to uphold the board's um, decision. Like, like, if I may, Wayne, like, I can't, I don't John. disagree with you, Dan. Um, I'm just stating that I just don't like it. Or, yeah. John? Well, <clears throat> I agree with you, Wayne. Um, I don't know whether what Bill spoke to is a law or whether it's a policy or just exactly what it is. The whole thing seems to me to be quite nebulous. And uh, since it does appear that way, uh, I, would, I would like to see us go ahead with uh, and, and overturn this uh, decision by the board and uh, allow these people to do what they're going to do. Um, and uh, the reason being that I still don't know whether are we legally bound to do this or is this a policy 
that uh, the city has come up with and all of a sudden uh, we have to uh, stick by a policy or whether there's uh, uh, some uh, legal justification for it. Let's go over to Gary. He had something. He was... I defer to Bill and then okay. I'll fill in if he's good, after he's done. So, so the fact that the city zoning code is exclusionary code is city code. So it is the city's law. It has been adopted by the council as being how the zoning code to be administered. And in virtually all Euclidean zoning codes, the Euclidean zoning codes are those zoning codes that regulate land uses specifically as compared to form-based code that have less of a use regulation component and more of a structural building massing um, physical regulation to it. Pretty much all Euclidean codes are going to be exclusionary. So if a use is not the permitted use is generally not a allowable use in that zoning district. What has been policy has been the zoning administrators in interpretation of what a guest house means and what a guest means and how that term and that definition relates to <coughs> the other defined uses such as a boarding house or bed and breakfast that uses the terms of compensation and rumors and lodgers. So somebody has to read the words and has to decide what those words mean in application. And so that's the zoning administrator's job to interpret the code. So that is really, that's the one thing that is somewhat nebulous. It's not specifically defined in the guest house. It doesn't specifically say that no compensation can be taken. But as you read the, the code in, as a whole and look at the other comparable uses in that district or even throughout the code, that address lodging and whether compensation should be taken or not and looking at the terms that are utilized as rumor and lodger and border, those are clearly a compensation situation. The guest house, where it talks about guests and or service quarters, is, is the area that has been historically interpreted to be not for compensation and that's been the zoning minister's decision. That is the area that is maybe not as precise as language could be and if the council has a different interpretation about what those words mean, the council can interpret its code and, and you can, but it would be based upon that decision. The fact that the code is exclusionary is, is law in the city and so that is how the uses are regulated currently under the code in its current form. Um, so that would be my response as far as what areas are fairly firm in the code, or where there is room for interpretation and if Gary has anything to add to that. Do you want to add to that, Gary? <clears throat> I think without going deeply into zoning ordinances, uh, the form-based code, which is what we don't have, is, is a looser code than the Euclidean code, which essentially has to be exclusionary because when you buy a piece of property within a certain zoning district, most people want to know what the neighbors can do or what they can do within that zoning district. So by its very nature, it has to be exclusionary because you can't list everything out, every possibility that someone might want to put in somewhere. Uh, and Bill's exactly right. The part of the interpretation that's up to you tonight and the part that's actually being appealed is the zoning administrator's decision on whether a guest house you can receive compensation for people staying in a guest house. As Bill indicated, you've got your boarding house has a certain definition, hotels have a definition about receiving compensation, so on and so forth. So if, and, and the code is not as clear as specific on guest houses as it is on some other areas. So if the council wants to decide that they disagree with the zoning administrator's decision and said, you know, we're not going to say that you can receive no compensation uh, for a guest house, you can certainly find that and overturn the zoning administrator's decision. If that is the case, the, the resultant action staff will take is then come back to you with a revision to the code and say, okay, you made this decision that guest houses can receive some compensation. How much? How tight do you want to make this definition? So, and that's just the way whether you're talking mm -hmm. statutory law, common law, um, uh, what we lawyers call stare decisis or, or decisions made by a court that's all molded into what you can and can't do. And they're all equally as binding. But what your job tonight is to decide whether or not you agree with the zoning administrator's decision. 
Rod, you got something you want to? I'll just add one more thing. When you're doing in statutory interpretation, you have to give meaning to the words that are there. And if something's not there, you also got to think that the people knew what they were doing when they um, drafted or constructed that um, ordinance. So it was there for a reason. And how you get there is you look at the other parts in the ordinance that do talk about poor compensation. And it specifically talks about it. Here it doesn't. So you're going to have to, you know, one way to interpret it is that they did that on purpose. Walter? Uh, as I don't like to say, but do say, I'm one of those up here that has the least experience in planning and zoning. But I can certainly understand when, I, when you take it to an extreme that if I buy a property in, in a city, R1, R2, and it doesn't say I can have a pig farm in my backyard, then I want that code, at least for my neighbor, to say you cannot have a pig farm even if it's not in the code. So, I mean, that's a, a far cry from a guest house. I understand that. But I think, it, to me, it makes the point that it is exclusionary, and, and, and I think all of us would want it to be so that we would be, have some expectation of what can occur, occur in our neighborhoods. Wayne? Bill, when you were talking about and you were talking defining the word guest, you need to remember that as Becky was showing the definitions up there, it also defined guest as a resident of a hotel or motel mm -hmm. who is getting charged. There is compensation being paid to that particular by that particular guest. To a hotel, not to a guest house. But it's the definition of guest. You know, and, and I think, and I don't know if it's working backwards or not, but, you know, if something like this, if we wanted something like this to happen, I would rather see, see us work on the language before allowing it. I, you know, and I don't know if, if it's allow it, then fix the language, or fix the language, then allow it. Well, I don't know how the process would be, and maybe somebody at the big boy table over there can. Bill, tell you us. want to take that one on? Bill? Well, I think the only way the council can allow it is to interpret the definition in a fashion that allows the use as the applicant has described they wish to conduct it. And then you can provide staff direction to clarify the language, to bring an amendment to the council for your consideration to specifically allow the activity and remove the ambiguity that in the language today. But I think you can't craft language from, from the dais, but you can interpret it if you wish to. If you feel that it supports the use as described, then I'd say you would have to provide a reasoning and a basis for the decision that you feel the definition includes a use as described and then you would direct staff to prepare an amendment, I would recommend, so that we don't have to have this discussion five years from now when it's somebody else here and is a new council and having to try to understand whether compensation allowed. I mean, it's, it's, it's to everybody's benefit, the public and everybody to have clarity in the code. And so if, there, if there's ambiguity and if you feel that the definition is not precise and there's ambiguity and you feel that it is interpreted in a different fashion than as the, the board decided, and I know Gary mentioned the zoning administrator, I actually haven't rendered a decision. It was the board that's made this decision it, I concur with it, but um, but if you wish to to change that, I think you would need to make sure that you could um, come to the conclusion that it's permissible under the definition as constructed today, but it directs staff to provide clarifications. Walter. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I certainly appreciate the, the applicant's initiative and his interest and, and reasons for wanting to do this, but I, I cannot see it. I'm going to have to make a motion to sustain the decision of the Board of Adjustment. And I'll have to second. Okay, we got a motion by uh, Walter and a second by Dan to sustain what the Board of Adjustment did. You, I mean, we'll have it up for discussion. You want, did you have yeah, a point I was going to make one other point about unintended consequences here because I could see if redefining the term guest and guest house, we suddenly start treading into accessory dwelling unit and we will wind up with conflicting zoning ordinance language between those two uses and which one do you want to fall under and you wind up with a, a real wormhole of definitions that you go down because at a thousand square feet this particular facility would not meet an accessory dwelling unit so what's to stop people from saying well I'm going to construct a guest house instead and then we wind up with conflicting definitions there so much as I like this, I think I agree, but would suggest that maybe come back after we do some more ordinance languages with planning and zoning 
and try it again and just go in with the newly created ordinances relative to that, relative to accessory dwellings. Other discussion before I take a roll here? Okay, the vote is to uphold what the Board of Adjustment did. We'll start with you, Art. Aye. 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 No. Okay, we had four ayes and one against, so it uh, stands that we'll, we will uphold the Board of Adjustment's decision on the conditional use permit. Mayor. Thank you very much. Wayne. I don't think we need to do this as a motion, but I would like to see council direct staff to go back in and rework this and uh, come up with something that is a little more user friendly and, and defines the ability of a guest house to charge if necessary or if that's their desire. Bill, you want to? If I might just get some clarification, is it the council's intent that you'd wish to see a legislative amendment to allow compensation in association with the guest house? That's that, what I'm saying. I'd, I'd almost want to I see don't. what comes from planning and zoning before we before Well, it we would go to that. planning and zoning first. Well, well cer certainly you'd have to, any legislative amendment would have to stuff. go through the planning and zoning commission, but just trying to understand if we could certainly place this on admin committee uh, to follow up to receive any additional direction from the council, but I just wanted to understand what the direction would be. Well, I'm kind of hearing mixed uh, emotions on that bill, some for and some not, so but if it goes through the channels, then it's going to be something that will come in front of the proper committees that would go through in front of planning and zoning, and they would either vote for it or against it, and then that would come in front of this board as well, this council as well. So, But, yeah, I'm hearing mixed emotions on it. Bill? I think, if I'm not mistaken, we've got two ways we can do this, as you indicated. We could just... Send it directly, the staff could work it up, bring it directly to admin, admin can take a look at it and send it straight to council, and we could bypass planning and zoning. No? That's not the way to do it. No, Gary? If I, if I might clarify. Hang on a second, Bill. Gary had a point he wanted well, to make here. Bill can explain the process, and you just can't bypass planning and zoning and a zoning okay. issue. But <clears throat> if the direction of the council is you would like staff to take it to planning and zoning for their consideration, and have them make a recommendation without direction from the council that you want to see compensation for guest houses, allow them to mull over the issue and make a recommendation. I think that would be uh, a preferred direction. Bill, would you agree? Yeah, I was just going to clarify that legislative code amendments can either originate from the council, directing planning zoning commission to look at this a code amendment and make a recommendation to the council, or they can be initiated at the commission level independently by the commission as a recommendation of the council. I was just trying to understand w w whether there's consensus among the council about what direction, what that amendment would look like, what it is you wished to be permitted. What well, kind of what I hear, what I'm hearing here, Bill, is that because there isn't a clear defined definition, that it would be nice to have some more wording in there and that the fact that we do not have wording in there means you can't do it is something that the council struggled with. And that makes complete, to me, that makes complete sense. And you may very well run into that. As somebody said over there, five or six years from now, you have a complete different set of council people and the, you could run into the very same thing. And that's what I think I'm hearing from the council. Dan? Yeah, and I guess the question would be, you know, do we, you know, if they recommend that it's, that it's, uh, guest houses doesn't receive compensation, then that's explicit in the code. You know, if, if that's the way, you know, that's if that's the recommendation they come up with, that we get explicit rather than it's not said, so then it's not allowed. You know, let's let's say what's not allowed. Yeah, if, if the or, council's desire... Or it might go the other way, if, they, if that's what their recommendation is. And that's what I was just trying to understand. If, if the intent was for the, count, for the council to have it made more clear in the code that compensation isn't allowed, that's one direction. If it was to allow for compensation, that's obviously a different direction and a different discussion. If you'd just like to have the commission review the matter, see how it fits in, uh, in consistency with other land uses, if compensation was going to be permitted, there's going to be a whole host of other duration of stay and other aspects that will have to be considered as part of that uh, discussion. Um, so I just was trying to get a better sense about what the council's direction was and what you would like the commission to look at. So, Walt, you. I'm hearing Wayne says he wants it to say compensation. You're hearing me say I don't want it to see compensation. I hear Art saying as a former chairman of the PNZ, as late as just 
December 31 or <laughs> January 6, uh, PNC is working on something similar to this at this time. I don't know that we should get on this horse before he's got a saddle on him. My opinion would be that this should be clarified. It is up there a little bit about where the other codes talk about compensation for boarding houses, compensation for B&Bs, hotels, compensation, et cetera. Guest houses doesn't say it. I think what, we're, I, what I think the one thing we're saying is we'd like to clean it up in some fashion, and if that needs to fit within PNZ's work on accessory drilling, accessory, I can't even talk, accessory, accessory <laughs> dwelling units, then we'd, I personally would like to see a more complete package brought back to us. Yeah, we can certainly incorporate it as part of the conversation and have the commission take a look at that. Okay.